How many of you have been feeling like they have no energy lately? Everything became so heavy, simple tasks becoming harder. If that's how you're feeling, then you are not alone. In this video, I will talk about why do we feel depressed during quarantine. So when quarantine first started, everyone had their own vision of how is it going to be like, what they will do, and how will they spend their time. We had our resolutions ready. We were like, I am going to wake up in the morning, work out, read the book, and make breakfast from fresh vegetables from my backyard. But now we know these goals sound ridiculous. We underestimated how difficult this time will be. Thinking about it now, two years ago, it was a dream to me to sleep more than eight hours every night. And now that I actually get to sleep that amount, it doesn't feel as great as I thought it would. The truth is, quarantine might not be a blessing for everyone. It has done so much bad for our mental health. But I still think that we can find a way that we can benefit from quarantine. Now that we have talked about emotions enough, let's explain why do we feel them and specifically why do we feel them according to psychology? Why do we feel our worst when we are supposed to feel our best? According to psychology, there are seven essential human being needs or what we might call them survival needs. Now let's take a look at this pyramid for example. At the bottom, we have physiological needs. Physiological needs are anything like food, water, and air. And they are important for obvious reasons, so we're just gonna skip that. Let's go to the next one. The next one is safety needs. Or we might also call them the needs for safe and stable environments. So if you think about it, right now we lack stability. We lack safety. We don't know what's going on tomorrow. We live one day at a time, not knowing what's gonna happen tomorrow. We don't know when are we going back to our usual lives. This lack of stability drives our minds crazy. The human mind loves routine. In other words, we need routine. Now that we have identified the problem, let's look for a solution the first thing we should do is try to get some type of control back into our lives a big part of our frustration comes from feeling hopeless there is nothing we can do other than sitting around and wait waiting by itself is very frustrating it takes a lot from our mental energy the good news is human beings are very flexible that's how we survived for thousands of years. Control can be gained in many ways. One way is always make sure that you have a plan B. Putting all your hopes on one thing happening will only bring you more frustration that will build up with time and turn into a huge disaster. So yeah, let's avoid that. I will give you a small example of how can you make a plan B. Let's say you wanted to make pasta for lunch today. When lunch time comes around, you go to the kitchen and the pasta is gone. But that's alright because you already have another meal planned. This is a simple example of control. This can be applied in all aspects of our lives. If anything, this is the right time to be a control freak. The second reason why do we feel depressed during quarantine is in the same pyramid as well. So if we go back to the pyramid, let's go to the third one, which comes after safety needs, which is belonging needs. We might also call belonging needs, love and attachment needs. So it is no secret that human beings are social beings, right? We need that. We need love, support, and belonging. We need to be a part of a family, a part of a group, a part of society. We crave contact with others for support, well-being, and entertainment. So what happened? When the quarantine first started, 
we became more reliant on digital tools to interact with the people we love because we were not able to see them and visit them. So what's the problem? The problem is that nothing compares to living in real communities and spend actual physical time with the people we love. So if we only get to have virtual contact without all the other social necessities like voice and touch, we will start to feel a big void inside of us that needs to be filled. So, as much as we might dislike the people around us, whether it's your roommate or a family member, that doesn't change the fact that you need them just as much as you need food and water to live. Now, I'm not trying to say that your internet friends are not important, cause of course they are. They understand you, they listen to you, they love you, and that's also a basic human need. But we need to understand that having meaningful online conversations or phone conversations with someone for hours doesn't fill our need for a physical time with the people we love. It's a simple equation. Lack of human interaction leads to isolation. Isolation leads to depression. The third reason, and you probably have heard about it a million times, which is lack of energy outlet. You have probably heard this a million times. You've heard someone talking about how important is exercising to our mental health. I know you are sick of it, but it's true. The truth is we do feel happier when we exercise. In our normal day-to-day -day life, we might walk to school, we might walk to the bus station, to the train station. Physical activity became an essential part of our life. But right now, if you sit all day in your house, this is like a shock to your body. Your body is not used to this. That's why make sure you get at least 10 minutes of exercise every day. The fourth reason and the last reason that I'm going to explain for today is lack of creative energy. We all have creative energy inside of us. It's part of what makes us human beings. We need an outlet, something to let all that energy out. Most of us used to fill this gap through our jobs, through our friends, or even through conversations. When we meet new people, we start asking them creative questions. Now, we don't think about that in our day-to-day -day life, but simple stuff like that, simple stuff like riding your bike in the park, like go to the beach and build a sandcastle, we don't pay attention to these small things, but they are a huge creative outlet. And now that we don't have it anymore, we start feeling like we have a big void inside of us that needs to be filled. If you have a hobby, if you enjoy any form of art, you should do that. If you enjoy singing, you should do that. Find any type of creative outlet that will make you feel better. Alright guys, that's it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. If you agree with the list that I made, please tell me in the comments. If you don't agree with the list that I made, also tell me in the comments. I would love to hear your thoughts. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you soon.